Welcome to the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. I'm Lori Rivers with you here to help you with some inspiration to get those aspirations out into the world. Well, welcome to May. Pluto starts our month off retrograde. It goes retrograde really, really early in the morning, about 3.30 and some change Pacific. That makes that about 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Okay, and I'm ish. I haven't, I, I don't recheck it. So, but it's up around that time. So, East Coast, watch out for your commute. I think we're going to see some internet outages, power outages, some really wacky weather. Um, it's, it's interesting. Okay, so remember, Pluto's still at zero degrees Aquarius, and now it's going to start sliding back. To Capricorn and it enters Capricorn June 11th. I'm going to talk about that a little bit on the podcast today. And of course, that big eclipse coming up. Yeah, we've got the Scorpio full moon eclipse. Now, again, it's not happening visibly for us in the Western Hemisphere. Okay. So North America, South America, Central America. It's not happening for us. <laughs> it's like a supercharged full moon. Okay. Eastern Hemisphere of the planet, specifically parts of Europe, including England. England catches just a little bit. Of, funny enough, like the tip of England, the part where London's in, gets the tail end of that. Bad day for a coronation. And I've been talking about that for about a year since they picked the date. I was like, oh, wow, it's obvious there is no astrologer involved. I'll talk about that too. And uh, I'll talk about what it means for you when it comes to the eclipse and how to use that energy. We have a great astro chat. We got all of the astrologers together and I just had a really beautiful and meaningful conversation. You know, the thing that I love most is watching people grow and evolve and come into themselves with greater and greater over time. And the end, you know, the astrologers watching them mature is is so gratifying. And uh, man, you know, good material, good material. And you're watching them bloom. Same thing with clients. Just watching people go from their strength to strength is uh, just absolutely empowering. So that and more, uh, we'll do patron shout outs because this podcast is brought to you by the patrons of the awake space. So thank you patrons for sponsoring the podcast. And then we will do Q and a at the end Q and a at the end. All right, let's get this party started. So, <laughs> you know, it's still Mercury retrograde. <laughs> I've been doing these little updates on TikTok. Um, yeah, it's a very retrograde retrograde because, you know, Mercury in Taurus doesn't like to change its opinions or its understanding of the world in general, in general. Okay. Depends on the house placement, but just, just in general, uh, Mercury in Taurus tends to like dig in its heels when it comes to it, it thought habits and all that fun stuff. And so this retrograde has just <laughs> been physically noticeable. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been dropping food. You know, it's just like go to eat an ice cream bar and splat, you know. Oh, look, leftovers. Um, <laughs> it, it's um, nothing horribly serious. Well, I, I trashed my last contact. <sighs> Now I've been needing to go get my prescription renewed. So I just helped that along a little bit. And and the thought came to mind um, that, you know, maybe I'm actually going to get better news than expected or there'll be a solution. So, you know, sometimes when things go higgledy piggledy, it doesn't mean that they're all the way bad. So sometimes it's a good thing. So just breathe deep, ride through it. So yeah, Mercury's retrograde. It stays retrograde until it stations on the 14th of May. So speaking of retrogrades, um, oh, good. So May 1st, May Day. <laughs> May Day. May Day, May Day, May Day. 
<laughs> oh, all I can do is laugh. If you've been listening to me for any time at all, you know what my chuckles mean. They're in danger. Uh, Pluto stations retrograde. And, um, uh, it, you know, it's, it's not that Pluto retrograde is a bad thing because it's not. I'm going to tell you how to maximize the time of its retrograde. However, any time a planet stations, it's just very reflective of a, a big energy, big events. Okay. It's noticeable. It's not something that you're like, oh, hey, did something just happen? You're like, what the hell is that? That's what happens during a Pluto retro or any retrograde or direct motion, any station. It's that moment in time. It's not the retrograde motion itself. Okay. It's just that day that it stands still. The day the earth stood still. Well, to our perception, these planets are standing still. And so it's just, it's like hitting the brakes. And if you think about the outer planets, it's like, like Mercury is kind of like driving a Yaris or a Honda Civic. You know, you hit the brakes, there's a jolt. Pluto, <laughs> Neptune, Uranus. It, that's like an 18 wheeler going. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> So yeah, there's going to be stuff um, on an individual level. And that's what you need to know. Don't, you know, there's big stuff out there and there's always going to be big stuff. There's always going to be weather. There's always going to be conflict. There's always, there's never going to be a time of peace, guys. That whole idea of like, if we all meditate for peace, we're all going to have unity. It, it's not going to happen. That's not how this planet runs. Now, it doesn't always have to be a shit show either. We, we can have like a happy medium. So on, on our individual lives, this time period, especially from May 1st to June 11th, you have time to get kind of your ducks in a row. I want you to review um, the time between March 23rd and May 1st. What did you learn? What did you learn about collaborating, about making agreements, about understanding the dynamics of a group, about how to work in a group or what your needs are in a group? Okay. What you need, what other people need. What about listening and, and dynamics in listening? Um, all of that is something you kind of want to write down and play around with because when we move back into the Pluto and Aquarius transit next year, from January to September, that's a time to really kind of power up with the organizational plan. Okay. And, and Pluto is all about power and power is truth in yourself. It's not dominance and control. Okay. That, that is a completely misunderstanding of what power is. That's the weakest form of power. Real power is, is, is self-knowledge, self-assessment, knowing your truth. You, it, you know, it's kind of like if somebody says, well, Lori, nobody agrees with your prediction. I don't care. I know my accuracy rate, right? right? Hashtag kiss my accuracy. Um, oh my God, she's arrogant. Nope, I'm confident. I have experience and I have proof. I have proof. I can back up what I say. You know, I'm not going to sit there and be falsely humble. <laughs> Humility is for men. Okay. Women have been humbled enough. We need to be confident. Take that. Run with it. So, um, so you want to kind of write out your playbook. And between now and June is the time to really run with the inspirations that pop into mind. Once Pluto slides back into Capricorn, we're going to see the further assessment and erosion of power structures and power dynamics that no longer serve. So basically, the jerks in the world are going to be more jerkalicious. They're going to be more power hungry in an obvious way. And they're going to do nefarious things that are so obvious it's going to kick them out of the range of power. They, they will get their karma. I promise. Now, will you be able to watch their karma spin? Nah, maybe, maybe not. Some of it will happen behind closed doors. Okay. We don't always get to see it, guys. Um, yeah. And as long as your happiness is reliant on the outcomes of somebody else or yourself, it, it, it you're just always going to be wanting something. Okay. That's, I'm just saying that. So how, how do you prepare for this? Well, just be mindful, write down a lot of things, 
you know, pay attention to the house Pluto is transiting in your chart. If it's transiting the first house, you've been um, really letting that social conditioning and understanding of self transform. You know, if you if you bought into and we all do, I lived through Pluto in the first house. It's where we let go of that social cultural programming of being too much, not enough. Um, where we hide our light to make other people shine or where we try to dim other people so we can shine, you know, it, it, any of that um, needs to be undone so that we know just when we're standing in our truth and who we are, we're actualizing. So you're letting go of things, getting rid of things, transforming through things that stop your self-actualization. Um, you come out bigger, better, stronger, more capable after a Pluto transit through the first house. It's an ever-evolving sense of self. So write down any noticings and maybe any resources you want to attach yourself to or, or things like that. If Pluto is moving through your second house, then you're changing up and transforming your ideas of how you bring in resources, okay? So maybe you've had an atta attachment to an idea around money. Um, maybe you felt money was bad. Maybe you felt, you know, if you attach yourself to the financial system, you're bad. Um, maybe you don't want to be a sellout, a sell-in, a buy-in, you know, all of that's crap. We all, we all have bills to pay. So it's letting go of that and understanding that you can be spiritual. You can be community minded. You can be philanthropic and not sell out. And not have to buy in, but actually create systems that allow yourself to be supported um, while you build things that benefit other people too. You know, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Uh, third house. Hello. <laughs> Me too. Um, really understanding the power of your voice, you know, that people really do want to hear what you have to say that you're not too opinionated you're you're not too loud you're not too quiet you're not that, that your observances are welcome um that people want what you've got you know to share that that it's okay to be passionate um i do want to warn you may 16th be careful driving be careful driving when jupiter enters taurus square pluto um, that's for anybody with an, a Taurus or an Aquarius third house. Okay. Okay. All right. Leo as well. So all of the fixed signs. Be careful on that day. May 16th. Take notes. All right. So if it, but so it, it could be you need to be observant tomorrow as well when Pluto stations retrograde as you're driving. Keep your eyes on the road. No distracted driving. Stay out of your head. Um, if Pluto's in in your fourth right now, if it's transiting your fourth house, then you want to look at you know family patterns that you're reworking, you know. And so maybe there was some ideas of of you know maybe there was some instability or chaos when you were growing up, and that makes you either feel ashamed or weird about your family or what have you. And, th and that's holding you back. It doesn't mean you have to embrace everything. Okay. It's just understanding that, that just because you had a family that worked a certain way or was different or maybe even full of geniuses, you know, but maybe those geniuses were broke, you know, um, it's breaking your thought habits up around that. You might be healing from some childhood wounds. When you're healing, stop focusing on the wound and focus on the healing. So often people just focus on the wounds. Imagine if a doctor only just stood over your leg, you broke your leg, let's say, and you've got a broken femur and the doctor went, wow, that femur's broken. Dang, how'd you do that? Whoa, that's gnarly. That bone's sticking out. Woof. That's a broken leg. Instead of like, oh, wow, your leg's broken. Let's let's set it, <laughs> you know. So think about that on your healing journey. Uh, if Pluto's going through your fifth house, you're, you're transforming how you put yourself out there creatively, your creative self-expression. That's performance of all clients. Um, it, it, whether it's public speaking or it's dating or it's parenting or it's um, creating art or your favorite hobby or gaming 
whatever. You're transforming through that. Maybe you're risk adverse or maybe you're super into risk, but you're learning how to mitigate it. Um, there's a transformation in that. If you're an artist, you know, you're, you're looking, you're looking past it and through your blocks. Um, if it's your sixth house, you're very much assessing your daily routine, the amount of stress you want in your life or don't want in your life. You're looking at how you work in collaboration. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't think you have to be a loner or that other people aren't capable or competent. Because that line of thinking is lending you into having to do everything on your own. All by myself. Right? Yeah. look at how you can rearrange your life to your optimum wellness this is a great time if you're starting a business or if you're having to freelance this is a good time to bolster up your ability to connect with other people so pay attention to that um seventh house it's really important to review how you enter into contracts agreements commitments with platonic life partners best friends spouses businesses um close clients you know so i'm not talking like if you do group programs it's not that but it's those close one-on-one -on -one clients making sure the agreements are fair and if they're not fair to you they're not fair to everybody right um so paying attention to that and how you grow through those agreements um if it's the eighth house you might be looking at your investment portfolios you might want to diversify switch things around you certainly kind of if, if you're if you have discretionary funds you might want to be looking at moving those around before may 16th <clears throat> think the bond market and treasury bills are going to be an interesting space and maybe not in a good way i don't know we'll see things are kind of topsy-turvy and no that's not financial advice you need to seek out the advice of your own financial advisor um it's a very important time to re-examine how you connect to your ancestors the dearly departed occult subjects how you work with the unknown that's all important how you connect in to things that we think are veiled. They're not really veiled. It's an illusion. There is no veil. I know different cultures talk about the veil, but honestly, from a metaphysical level, from a quantum level, there really is no veil. The only veil that's there is the one you believe is there. So playing around with that. Ninth house is a time to, you'll be, you've been transforming your beliefs. You've been looking at the world. You've had very strong beliefs. Your beliefs are powerful. The way you share things, things you believe about how the world should work, about what matters. <clears throat> and so you want to take note of, of ideas and thoughts and epiphanies you've had around what's true, what is truth, how do you work with people, how do you make judgments, what do you want to share in the world? You may not want to share yet. You will be. You will be before that transits over in 20 years. So you're gaining, you're, how, what wisdom do you have to share? You may not know yet. It's all right. Start writing stuff down. Um, it's a good time to reassess your goals, too. Like, are your goals changing? Are they morphing? Or do you just feel that little inkling in the back of your head? Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got uh, the 10th house. You might be having um, some changes of mind in, in what your calling is, or you might be just, like, really obsessed with the idea of having a purpose to fulfill. Um, just remember your, your life purpose is to have a range of experiences. You're a bit of a polymath if you've got Aquarius in the 10th and, um, those, the drive is to serve humanity at large, you know, and you may not like to be around a whole lot of people, but you are intrigued by people, your enthusiasm for subject matter, your enthusiasm for different aspects of things is important. So pay attention to that. Um, if you're trying to change jobs, uh, it, 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 that look more into your sixth house on that one. But you could see um, a promotion or even a manager leave 
Um, so pay attention to that. 11th house, you're looking at how you can transform your community. You're looking, you know, you're probably very, very aware of the needs of your community, what's lacking in your community. What I would be doing is making kind of a playbook of how do we find resources? What are the solutions? Who can we bring together? Who are the stakeholders? Um, and are there anybody, you know, are there any other groups? Is there anybody else out there trying to do what you're dreaming of? So often people start things without checking to see if anybody else is doing it. They just think nobody else is doing it because they haven't looked. Go look at who's doing what with whom for how many cookies. See if you get involved. 12th house. It's it's an important time with Pluto going through the 12th it, it, to transform your fear into faith, to transform your connect your feeling of being disconnected into being connected. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting transit. Okay, so this is the time to kind of develop rituals to help yourself feel grounded and to connect into the all that is. And you don't need substances to do it. You don't. You don't. You don't. Unless you're under doctor's orders. I don't want to hear it. Okay. You could do that through meditation. If, if you were at the meditation for the, the full moon ceremony that we did uh, Sunday, uh, you'd know you don't need nothing to get there. Those are powerful. Damn, the energy was flowing. So you, there's lots of ways you can connect to that energy. You don't need substances necessarily to do it. All right. So that's Pluto retrograde. Um, again, I think we're going to see power outages, issues with the internet, internet security. Um, you know, Elon keeps opening his mouth and it's just so much fart gas. Or I see issues with Twitter, Facebook, um, all manner of social media. Don't forget to ride your representatives, you know, and Congress people's butts about the Restrict Act. Act. Um, just get a hold of them. Tell them no. No, 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 no. No need our rights taken away. It's not about TikTok, guys. It's about they, they don't want us to use the internet to organize. Right? It's so blatant. And the fact that it's bipartisan is disgusting. Right. I always love hearing certain people say they're not the same. Yeah, I don't know. One side has egregious religious and philosophical beliefs, but I don't see that the other side is hammering too hard back. There are some, but not, you know, uh, and the other side will use those of us who are more progressive and leftist for our votes but then when it comes time to do things like codify women's bodily autonomy or even our ability to be human in the constitution they say it's not time and they waste time and then we end up here so yeah they're not the same but you know i don't think any of the parties are friends but at the same time it's what we've got to work with so give them hell guys give them hell all right <clears throat> so It's going to be interesting. It really is. Um, I just expect this week to be very volatile. I think we're going to see more stuff going on in Sudan. Um, it may spill over into region, uh, neighboring regions, um, especially with the eclipse, kind of uh, the East Africa itself, Central East Africa may have some issues. Hey, I know we're big in Tanzania. Or Tanzania. How am I supposed to say that? I can always forget. Tanzania. Tanzania. Anyway, um, hey guys, hold the faith. I think you guys will be stable. All right. Um, yeah, we're like number two in Tanzania. Tanzania. Right? Right? Number two in spirituality. I'll take it. Okay. I know they listen to us in Madagascar. Thank you. I hope it's King Julian. You got the joke, right? I like to move and move it. <laughs> um, I know you're not King Julian, but thank you in Madagascar and Mauritius, Seychelles. Uh, you guys need to watch out for the weather, okay? 
as well. I think monsoons are going to kick up and they're going to kick up hard. I haven't looked at the weather. I don't know, but that's just what the astrology looks like to me. And that eclipse is pretty big. I think you may see some very, very turbulent seas. So if you have small craft, be careful. All right. If pe people haven't been on the Indian Ocean, I don't think they realize how big those swells are on a good day. So be careful out there. All right. Um, yeah. 68 countries. Listen to this. <laughs> so cool. All right. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. Then we're going to read through the Patreon shout outs and talk a little bit about planet of the month. What we're going to do. We're going to be looking at the moon. Staring at the moon. Mm, yeah gonna be looking at the moon this month of may learning about it in different ways and how the moon relates to our ability to respond or react major life skills coming down the pike all right <laughs> Holy moly, guacamole, 800 patrons. What do you know? Wowza, wowza, wowza. Um, I am absolutely floored, honored, and amazed. So this is our newest group of patrons. We've got Sherry, Polly, Reba, Kyle, Danny, Kendall, Shannon, Tosha, Mugwort, and Moon Podcast. I got to check you guys out. Um, Charlie Fox, Chloe, Varina, Krista, Rosina, Natalie, Michelle, Dominic, Kaya, Kate, Megan, Stephanie, Alyssa, Margaret, Brienne, Crystal, Angela, Mountaintop Artist, Shanessa, Cecilia, Woodcox, Kimberly, Nicole, Glitch Paladin, Todd and Abby, Tennessee Street Cat, Carla, Racine, we'll just go with Carla, Mark Dean, Malcolm distracted me, Malcolm sounds are free, Andrea, Laura, Alexis Musa, and Brooke, welcome, 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 uh, if you haven't joined us in the Discord, please do, that's where all the action happens, if you're in Planet of the Month or Living by Luna, make sure you come into the Discord for that because that's where all the action happens. We just host the videos from the workshop in the Patreon. So just so you know, just some housekeeping. Um, had a great full moon ceremony tonight, workshop. You, the people who participated, you guys will get the link on Monday, hopefully. Okay. Look, we've got Mercury retrograde, Pluto stations retrograde. Things might happen, okay? Things might happen, but we're going to do our damnedest. I'm actually recording this again on Sunday, um, and my intuition said that I should record the astrologers with me on Saturday, and I'm glad we did because I'm staring at my podcasting software, which is um, podcaster, uh, podcasting or Spotify for podcasters. There we go. And it says, we'll be making some new updates on Monday, May 1st, between 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern, which may cause temporary failures. <laughs> so we're going to publish this Sunday night, guys. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Oh, my God. All right. So, um... Yeah, thank you, patrons. Without you, there is no me. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. This makes me feel like I'm an NPR show. So thank you so much. Um, without you, we wouldn't have the new gear, the new mic, uh, the new recording studio. So grateful to you. For those of you who took the astrology quiz, like just a little knowledge quiz, um, I'll be uh, doing more of those to help people assess where they're at. Uh, some people uh, were a little confused. Uh, they thought that by completing that test and quote unquote passing it, that meant they were beyond beginner. No, you're still a beginner. That's all beginner information. It's just, are you ready to, to move forward <laughs> is what I'm looking for. And some questions were more important in that than others. So for those of you 
who are looking to do the intermediate class, there's going to be a follow-up assessment as well. Um, but it, it won't be huge. I'm just going to double check a few things because I want, I want to make sure everybody's ready to run and it's going to be participatory. It's not just listening to me. It, it's We're going to be working on stuff because you want to get to the next space especially those of you who would like to be a professional someday maybe not yet but someday someday somewhere out there see all right um let's see let's let's do some uh, well, let's talk about the eclipse and then, <laughs> then we'll do astro chat Oh, Lordy, 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 have mercy. That Pluto retrograde information is almost mirrored by the eclipse information. So, all right, we'll do the eclipse next and we'll talk about what a shit show it's going to be for King Charlie here on the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. Okay, boys and girls, thems and theys, it's important to remember that eclipses must be visible, all right, to have a major impact. So this full moon is is a bit of a doozy, and so in the Western Hemisphere, we're treating it like a full moon, okay? And the Scorpio full moon is always a time to release, release, um whatever it is that the full moon is is drying up okay and you're probably feeling it you're probably feeling it as we speak because the moon is hitting the gibbous phase right now and that's where it's waxing to you know it, it's starting to look fuller and fuller as it moves into its uh into its uh full phase so <clears throat> technically may 1st it's still in the the first quarter as it waxes into the gibbous but it, so it's with the waxing gibbous phase and so stuff is up on deck to be released what are you releasing well it's a lot like i was talking about with the pluto through the houses because you know pluto is the modern ruler of scorpio okay and so <clears throat> this full moon in scorpio if it's going through your first house oh yes please um you want to let go of your insecurities you want to let go where you think you're too small or maybe it's just you know it's me against the world <laughs> it doesn't need to be you and against the world it's it's you putting yourself out there you know so letting go of maybe not liking your picture taken you know do it anyway do it anyway you don't like to be on camera um, do it anyway. If you if you have physical insecurities, you know I, I I get you. Me too. I have Coke bottle glasses and I trashed my contacts because Mercury freaking retrograde, and yet, you know, like I don't think anybody else cares that I have thick glasses. So it's letting that not get in the way. That kind of thing. Second house, um, letting go of ideas of scarcity, letting go of. You know, if you're constantly looking at what isn't there, what isn't in your bank account, what isn't available to you, you're not able to see what is available. So you're you're releasing fear and money insecurity, food insecurity. Um, I'm not saying to ignore a, a shitty situation. I'm just saying, it, it, again, you're you're releasing the obstacles and the blocks to being able to find solutions, right? So if you're just focused on the worry and the doubt, um, which can be very much a learned habit, then then it makes it hard to find the other pathways to, to fill your basket. If the full moon's happening in your third house, you're letting go of thinking people don't hear you, that your voice isn't loud enough, or that people don't want to know what you have to say, or or that they won't understand you. Um, that your words, you know, your words are powerful, by the way, if you have Scorpio in the third house. And it's recognizing the power that is there. So letting go the the fear and the worry and the doubts around that if you've got um it could also be releasing writer's block you know 
Um, if you've got that full moon running through your fourth house, um, you might be looking at a change of living situation. You might be releasing some old childhood wounds. You could be releasing um, resentment, irritation. I'm not telling you to give you know people a pass. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying you're letting go of the obstacles to your healing and your stability. If you're overly focused on the woundedness, it makes it difficult to heal. Okay. We talked about that earlier in the podcast. Um, if you are overly focused on the, um, the insecurity, it's hard to find the security. So remember that if the moon is going through that fifth house of yours, then it's letting go of uh, the fear of performance. It's letting go of, of feeling like, um, you have to stay small. You know, Scorpio fifth house doesn't mean you have to stay quiet and private. Scorpio fifth house has a, a powerful presence on stage, powerful presence, whether you're speaking or or writing or whatever your hobby is you have a powerful presence it's time to use that presence let go of the the worry and the doubt and the fear um of rejection okay because those old stories that somebody did you wrong or somebody left you alone or somebody didn't love you deep enough hard enough wanted you enough you know somebody rejected your art somebody rejected your child somebody rejected your heart you know it, those stories aren't helping you build anything new look into where you can um, obsess in a different way about shining your light out in the world. Okay. Sixth house is our daily routines, our health, our wellness, our work in the world. And if you have Scorpio in the sixth house, you, your work in the world needs to be meaty and transformational and magical in a way. And so letting go of this idea that you're just an ordinary Joe, <laughs> You're not ordinary. There's nothing ordinary about you. And it's okay to be extraordinary. And it's okay to expect quality in all things. It's important to do that. Um, if you have uh, this, you might also let go of a routine or a job that, that just isn't serving you. You might be moving into new things that that fulfill that more. Or you take your job to the next level. Seventh house. The seventh house is of the agreements and contracts and partnerships of all kinds. Okay. Whether it's your platonic life partner, your very best friend in the whole world, your spouse, a client, um, somebody you have a contract with. Uh, this You're letting go of anything that isn't fair in that. You're letting go of maybe holding things down, holding down the fort, overworking, um, doing, doing more than your fair share, um, being the, the, the therapist, you know, you, you know, as deep as you can be and as soul transforming as these relationships can be, you know, it, you're not always equipped to handle that. And it, it might be time to suggest very special people in your life um get the kind of uh, support they need from professionals um likewise it could be that you want to get that kind of support so eighth house eighth house is very again it's a very magical house it, it's how you deal with the unknown so letting go of fears around the unknown letting go of some of the superstitions and you know, fear-based things we grow up with where we make the metaphysical sound, you know, freaking dangerous. It, 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 there are things we need to be cautious about out there, but honestly, the more you kind of play into the negative, the more you're activating it. So it's kind of letting go of some of that, letting go of some of the old grief things that came up, you know, that's important. It doesn't mean you don't love and miss people. Remember, we only grieve as deep as we love. But if we're only focused on the grief and not the love, 
you know, we suffer and we struggle and we don't do as well in life. Um, ninth house um, is the house where we have our beliefs. You know, it's the wisdom that we've gained moving through that eighth house. And uh, you might have some really, really strong beliefs about, you know, your integrity, your principles, what matters to you, your goals. You know, your goals are there. Your big vision is there. And you may be amending those or changing those because of changing circumstances or the world changing or gaining new information. You know, it's always about expansion. If you believe the same thing you've always believed since you were five years old and you're 50 and you haven't amended that, it, it might be time. Okay, so letting go of some beliefs around... Um, how you can achieve, what you can do, what you have to share, all of that. Okay. Tenth house. Um, you may be looking at a new position. You might be um, recognized for your work or your effort. You might be looking for... Freaking Mercury retrograde. Okay, we're going to finish up the 10th through the 12th house. My bad, guys. I touched something on my computer and I just, it's late. I don't want to record. I have horoscopes to write. This just, all right. So 10th house, you could be uh, recognized for your work. You could be finding, you know, that you're promoted or moved to a different department or you even have some new opportunities. If a job goes away, don't freak out. I know it's hard not to, but there's better stuff on the way, okay? Um, and I'm not saying you're going to lose your job. It, it just might be the company has stuff going on. Um, you can always look up who's planning on layoffs, by the way. You don't have to worry about it too much. Um, you can look it up. I can't remember what it's called, but Google it. Google, like, pending layoffs, and it'll there's, there's a website you can look stuff up on. Um, I do not think everybody with a Scorpio mint haven is going to be laid off. All right. Um, but there, there may be some changes one way or the other. Whatever change happens, just know it's opening up new doorways. 11th house is hope, dreams, inspiration, aspiration, groups, community, and associations. And so um, you might have a change in your, your groups. You might have um, some sudden insights, some inspiration. Um, you want to let go of nobody likes me. I'm always alone, blah, blah, blah. You know, make, make some powerful friends. You know, if you're making friends with people who have to tear down other people to get their way, you're not with the right people. They're not friends. They're not good community members. Get to get around people who want to make a difference. Um, <clears throat> 12th house. If the full moon is running through your 12th house, it's the time to release anxiety and lean into faith or your connection with the all that is. Guidance. Okay. Guidance. So you're, you're leaning into your higher self, your connection. Let go of the idea you're not intuitive. All right. That's what's up with this. Uh, that's what's up with this full moon eclipse remember it's not visible in the western hemisphere if you are in the eastern hemisphere especially the south quarter of that all right but but the east eastern hemisphere there's a huge chunk of it sees this eclipse beware there will be political instability beware there will be some food insecurity really weird weather um and we may see more countries um, kind of pushing against the Commonwealth. I think that's a whole lot of that. All right. Up next, I'm going to do some Q&A, including answering a question about intuition. Actually, up next is Astro Chat. Mercury freaking retrograde. See, astrologers are not immune to transits. I was like, wait, I forgot something. So next segment is, and no, I'm not recording this, re-recording. Um, in the next segment, we've got Astro Chat with Mackenzie, Casey, Jennifer, and Rita. And we have a great conversation. We talk about intuition. I'll be talking more about intuition at the end of the podcast when I'm doing the Q&A. We're going to talk about 
why people don't think they're intuitive. We have a very special astro chat today because we've got all of the astrologers together. We're going to be talking about the things we learn through our readings, how they reflect kind of what we need to hear sometimes. And we're going to be talking about intuition because so often we bring it up in readings and people say, but I'm not intuitive. So we thought we'd fix that. All right. Well, we've got Casey, Mackenzie, Rita, and Jennifer here. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yes. Hello. So exciting. <laughs> and give me two seconds. Hello. Hi. Hi, Rita. Well, this is exciting. We don't all get in the same place at the same time. I know. I love when we all get together. Yes. It's a magical moment when our schedules line up. <laughs> it right. is. It is. You know what a group of astrologers is called? What? A, a constellation. <gasps> I love that. I made it up, but it sounds good. Um, so, so how are you guys doing? How are readings going? Good. As yeah, always. Been good. Yeah. I love that. I love talking to people about their astrology. Right. You guys have been doing a lot. Yes. It's been good. All good, all good readings. Right. I think we bring in some good people. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Right. So what have you been the themes, you know? We've mm -hmm. talked about that, like, in private. We talk about we get groups of people that kind of sh have similarities in their charts. And it's always kind of kind of fun to see how that plays out. <laughs> Yeah. gotten a lot of oh. yeah <laughs> we all talk at the same time That's yeah right. go ahead jen free for all um i've gotten a lot of pisces mercuries like out of the last five readings i've done three of them have had a pisces mercury wow yeah we talk a lot about um learning to like listen to the intuition mm -hmm. and like learning how to get quiet um, especially I like to talk about um, like the somatic things they could do to care mm -hmm. for the body and the nervous system so you can kind of tune out those um, unhelpful thoughts or um, when you're like picking up on other people's stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah knowing like how to separate that out um, it's really useful mm-hmm yeah, that's been a big theme in like my life. So I'm always mm -hmm. happy to <laughs> help someone else understand that. Mm -hmm. I really am talking to myself when I <laughs> give these advice. We often are. <laughs> We've been talking about that in private. That's why we're doing it now. <laughs> right. yeah. What did go ahead, Rita? Um, I mean, as as uh, is said uh, before. Uh, for me, it was more about like zoning, if to zone out the placements that mm -hmm. my clients share, although I noticed the pattern mm -hmm. um, in my recent readings. Uh, it's more about bringing you back that you cannot divert yourself, no matter what you do. You cannot divert yourself from the purpose that you're here for. Mm -hmm. Say a little more about that. Um, so I, I noticed that, you know, of course there is a range how a person can be fulfilling their purpose mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. You know, I am really connected to the seasons and the seasons go like to themes changed 
changed a lot for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I noticed as we are getting close to, you know, spring and summer, uh, it was a lot of me uh, kind of looping up people's perceptions of, oh, yeah, I'm on this path and I'm mm. on the right path. And what I did even like, you know, five years ago, like trying to help somebody out in the grocery store. And then it landed me in this conversation. And now I am, you know, working for this person who is somehow connected to that guy. Right. You know, so those are like the crazy things that just the align. synchronicities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Our, our souls kind of use every experience to get to the point of the purpose. Yes. You know, there's, there's, yes, we have free will and that's the range of experience you're talking about. You know, we can sometimes do it the hard way and it's still meeting our purpose. Yeah. 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 It's wonderful to just wonder about like, as to look back even on your own path as an astrologer and you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, I kind of near missed this opportunity, you know, or this person in that setting, but then they still came around. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The timing. Mm hmm. Exactly. Anybody else notice stuff like that? Just whether you're giving advice to yourself or helping people understand their intuition or what it is. What else has been up? Um, I've been getting a lot of eighth house moons and, mm-hmm. um, Obviously, that is a very intuitive placement, and um, I do, like, mention that in the readings, like, very intuitive. Um, I don't know if people always see that in themselves, though. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. It's just Mm kind of like a natural instinct, almost. Mm -hmm. And when I, like, mention things, they're like, oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I do do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So often when we point it out to people, they'll be like, I'm not intuitive, because they think of, like what they see in the media, like they, like, you know, sixth sense where I, I, I see dead people, you know, (laughs) um, which maybe they do. Um, but most people think it's, it's really bells and whistles when it can be just so subtle. It's like breathing or you, you know, most people don't notice their sense of smell until they have a stuffy nose. Right. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about the awareness and importance of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're not taught, we're, in fact, we're taught to not pay attention to it. Yeah, so what about you, Casey? What's been up for you? Um, a, a couple of the themes that I've noticed lately, I've been getting a good amount of Libra moons, but the even more than that, I've been getting um, a lot of Leo Mars placements. And what I've noticed with that is that many of them have charts where I, I I bet that if they I bet that they like don't relate as much to the Leo aspect of themselves right they're, they're the mm-hmm. rest of their charts it feels a little bit more like subdued than what you might think you know if you hear Leo Mars mm-hmm. it, might, it might conjure a certain picture so mm-hmm. I thought I thought that's been very interesting I've gotten a lot of a lot of I guess what I would say more subdued <laughs> Leo mm-hmm. Mars mm-hmm Mm-hmm. placement so that that's been really interesting and um a lot of people that have uh well I, with my uh, i tracked a lot of virgo risings um mm-hmm. in fact i i actually just right before this pulled up my next reading it's also a virgo rising um but so a lot of times a lot of that leo energy is in the 12th house mm-hmm. so it's not as front and center mm-hmm. um so you know i've been discussing a lot about you know, kind of I'm sorry. Go letting ahead. yourself letting yourself uh shine a little bit more, letting letting that part of yourself, you know, mm-hmm. exist more mm-hmm. and, and and being aware of it that you have that in you, even if it's not necessarily something that you see in yourself or other people see as much. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and it can be a subtle um mm-hmm. subtle bouginess. Yeah. You know, um I've got a, I got a, somebody in my life who has a Venus Leo, uh, Leo and sorry, Venus in Leo. Mercury retrograde is kicking me right now. 
uh, <laughs> Venus and Leo in the 12th. And they yeah. have very good taste. Like it's mm. impeccable and it's intuitive. Like mm -hmm. they style me. So like when I look really nice and my makeup's really nice, it's because of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, yeah. damn, some skills. <laughs> yeah, the, the taste yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they have lots of stuff even. It, you know. Just, no, it's, it's more like making it kind of making it count, you know, I don't know. It doesn't necessarily need to be mm -hmm. um, expensive. It just is like kind of this dignified look mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. tap into when they need to or want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. I had a lot of Taurus raisings, which is interesting. Isn't a it's not a big surprise because of, you know <laughs> we've got uranus happening jupiter's heading into the sign soon and people may not be conscious of those things but it's maybe those disruptive events that are showing up so like all the virgo risings might be feeling a little rattled because we've got saturn and pisces in the opposite sign you know the pisces mercury's are probably feeling it with saturn coming there which you guys aren't doing transit readings yet but a couple of you are ready to start training for them. Just saying. Just saying. We'll keep moving along. Uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yeah, kick, kick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> right. Indeed. So we've talked a little bit amongst ourselves some of the things you get because i always check in with you like how's it going what are you noticing you know and some of you have brought up that you find you're giving your almost giving yourself advice when you do a reading you know that it's something you need to hear too and i think i've talked with you guys separately on the podcast a little bit about that but what are you noticing these days is it is it still true yeah oh. absolutely <laughs> it's almost annoying <laughs> it's like stuff that even at the moment i don't necessarily recognize that it's for me also mm -hmm. but then i'll kind of sit with it later and be like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> they <Right>. got me <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's next yeah i mean even during the reading, I'm like, you know, I could take this advice myself. <laughs> and it's always one of those things that's like, I know it's easier said than done, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's part of like leaning into your intuition, like doing the things that are hard and the mm -hmm. things that expand you. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, being willing to take the risks. Yes understanding that life isn't pass or fail or getting grades it's about experiences mm -hmm. and yep <laughs> it's about the earthy wind all around us mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so <clears throat> compared to like even a month or two ago how do you feel about where you're at now reading because we're always hard on ourselves when we're reading, we're like, you know. Like, I always feel like, even just after each reading, it's always like a, I always have a good feeling afterwards. And I think like those good feelings like add up, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They build confidence, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just like, that feeling of um, even like that I'm like helping someone that's kind of like what makes me feel good I guess <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah just knowing that I'm like helping people understand themselves even just a little bit more mm -hmm. and like because a lot of times people are very hard on themselves and so it's easier to see like you know the negative things that are like common in pop astrology and so people use that to like feel bad about themselves so when I 
tell them like the nice things and like the their strengths and um Mm -hmm. even though they've been through a lot of hard shit um this is like what the universe kind of gave them at birth um Mm -hmm. and like just helping people see that in themselves is really rewarding and Mm -hmm. i'm noticing that more and more after each reading i love that i love that yeah, showing that we've equipped ourselves to kind of deal with the obstacles. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, we can see we can see where the obstacles were too. But you know, nobody nobody has an easy life. That that's a lie. There isn't a single person on the planet who had an easy ride in one way or another. Some we all go through things. There might be people who have a little more good fortune or a little more you know, financial wellness, but in general, we all go through stuff. We all have t- losses and, and challenges and it's easy to focus there, you know, mm-hmm. instead of what makes you cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else has pe- what else have you guys observed in your readings towards yourself as an astrologer? Because again, it, we grow after every reading. You know, that's, yes, that's we what, do. Yeah, you will yeah. the whole career. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think just because of my chart layout, I mean, what it reflects, um, and also I'm a Gemini rising, so there is a lot of things that come up and it's also like a kind of call not to take things personally because like I still write my notes for a long time you Mm -hmm. know because this is like how I just do it I just Mm -hmm. decided to make peace with it you know at a Mm -hmm. certain point right because it works for me now so you Mm -hmm. know I'm I'm being rooted in the present Mm -hmm. um and being a Gemini rising and looking and also Virgo Mars and I'm looking in Virgo Mars and Mercury and Scorpio ruled I'm just Mm -hmm. looking at my notes and I'm like wow I wrote it so I at some point I experienced that oh I love that because yeah yeah, because I feel like you cannot write something that you didn't even subtly touch right exactly yeah yeah you can't even be aware of it if you haven't had some kind of interaction with it yeah yeah i love that and i love that you've made peace with your process rita you know everybody's going to have a little more unique process and i think with your scorpio mercury and your virgo mars that need to be extremely thorough i think if anything all of you guys have such high um high levels of integrity and principle that like making you not feel so responsible for the outcome has been part of my job. Um, have you guys relaxed a little bit about that into trusting the client to take away what they can and, and absorb more after yeah. they go along? Good, good. Yeah. Yeah, good. big time. It feels yeah. more natural now. I just have mm-hmm. kind of, you know, adjusted to being <laughs> being an astrologer. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I worry less about how it's going to go because at this point, it's like, I know how it's going to go. It's going to go well. It always goes well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. trusting that and trusting myself and trusting the the clients, you know, chose me to do their reading for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Just letting it be. Mm-hmm. Mm. Look at you guys. Look how much you've grown so much no longer baby pancakes nope you're not that's why i didn't introduce you as my pancakes or my astro babies you are grown-up astrologers now make me a little verklempt oh <laughs> so proud of you we chocolate chip pancakes now <laughs> perfectly golden brown with crispy edges right Oh, no, yep. I'm really, really proud of you guys. I get such amazing feedback from each one of your clients, you know, when they send back a little testimony and we'll start getting that stuff up on the website. And I'm, I'm working on the back end. Speaking of constellation, we make a great constellation. I'm very proud of you. What do you think? Um, 
What do you think is like your biggest win internally as an astrologer? Like, what do you feel now? Like maybe there was a doubt in the beginning and that's not an issue now, or what's, what's one of your big wins? I think it's been like trusting that I know enough and that, you know, my knowledge is valuable because, you know, I just like study a whole bunch of things. I'm like, whoa, people want to know what I have to hear and mm -hmm. it's useful to them. Um, yeah, I have a tendency to be very quiet mm -hmm. a lot of the times, but um, yeah, I really enjoying being able to like recognize that <laughs> people like what I have to say mm -hmm. and it's useful to them um, with all the feedback I would get. That, it's like, that. oh, that's like, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I can be like, oh, like, it's like everybody knows that, but, you know, oh. my perspective and their perspective, like, meeting. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Sounds like your Venus in Aquarius is really happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Who's next? I relate to that a lot, Jen, because I, I think a big part of this process for me has been... I feel it, doing astrology, doing the readings in some ways ha, feels really natural. And it's like, I can doubt it because it's so natural. Um, like I can doubt that the information that I have to share is as useful as I hope it is, you know, because it just feels like, I don't know. It just feels like, it just feels like me being me in some ways, you know? And I'm like, how can that be what people are here for? But, um, no, but yeah. that's exactly what they're there for. Right. And that's yeah. been, that has been a, a something that I've just had to accept like <laughs> over and over and over. It's like, okay, all right, all right, I get it. <laughs> um, just within myself, because, you know, it, just I'm, I'm grateful that I've had just lovely, lovely clients. And I don't know that they even know that they've had that impact on me. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it can, yeah, it, totally, Jen, it can feel like, you know, this is just me being me and, you know, how, how can that be useful? And, and then it is. And so, yeah, be, becoming comfortable with that. I love that. I think for me, um, it's just given me, a like a sense of purpose in a way, um, you know, I've been through a few like dark nights of the soul and just really, a few. Yeah, mm -hmm. just a few. <laughs> I'm probably gonna even count on one hand. But um yeah, so I've like really had to like dig down deep and um I don't know. I don't know that being an astrologer is my purpose. It might be, um, but it definitely just like is so rewarding and it's something that I love and connecting with people and helping people see their worth is like I don't know. I, it's just very rewarding. <laughs> I think for you, Mackenzie, knowing you, I think astrology is one of many tools you'll use over your lifetime to help people heal and transform in very deep spiritual ways, you know, mm -hmm. and it can be done in a light way. You don't have to take it, take on other people's traumas, you know, yes. just, especially those of us who have experienced a lot, you know, um, we don't necessarily need to deep dive in that direction, but understanding that we can hold space for transformation. I, I see that in you so much. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you're, you're really, yeah. I love that trust you have in that. Yeah. All around good experience. <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm beautiful yeah the winds are interesting for me mm -hmm. so um for me i noticed that i'm kind of like through the astrology readings that i do i am 
celebrating the present i'm drenching myself in like sudden hellos when somebody books the session and then you know like bittersweet goodbyes as i close the session as like you know i went through the all the notes we had a conversation mm-hmm. with a client and i'm like oh my god i met another person mm-hmm. that is so fun mm-hmm. right i love that the bittersweet goodbye yeah yeah it's okay to ask clients to give you updates you know, um, yeah. I don't think people do. realize. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Because I don't think people realize how how much we put in to getting ready for those readings and the anticipation of meeting this person that we've examined in a chart. And then you go into some pretty interesting territory in a, in a reading and then bye, you know. <laughs> And you, you can sit and wonder, you're like, I wonder how they're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm Eastern European, so like, and, you know, Middle Eastern people can probably also relate to that. Um, it's like when somebody, I guess, leaves the house, you like drench them in like everything that, you know, they, they want or like the best thing in the house almost like. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is like something that I do. I'm like, please. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Keeping the connection. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Here's, here's the food. Take the food. Here's some perfume. Take the perfume. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gosh, I'm proud of you guys. You've worked really, really hard. And we've got new classes coming up and, um, getting people ready to take professional mentorship, which will be different than what you guys and I do. (laughs) It'll still be rigorous. (laughs) But again, I I always say we should be living together at this point. Yeah, we we do do. in a way. (laughs) Virtually. Yeah. Right. All hours, day and night. Right. I actually really enjoy the the, you know, I don't know, just like waking up and seeing people chatting. I'm like, hello, you know, right? know it feels like it feels like people are already like drinking coffee in the living room, you know, and you yeah. just wander yeah. in. Right. Yeah. That is what it feels like. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. It is yeah. nice. It it's is. Like our, it's like <laughs> our Alan Oaken. Right. Alan Oaken was a student of Isabel Hickey and they had kind of like a communal space. And I would love to do that. We'll get to that someday. Working on it. Combine all of our astrology books. Right. Oh, the library will be amazing. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. And think of like the used bookstore tours we can do and go siphon (laughs) for the out of print books. Oh my God. That's that's my favorite thing to do. (laughs) Look for astrology books. Right. It's so amazing when you stumble across a gem. Right. And I'm not going to lie. Some of the coolest ones are these old, like self-published, tiny little pamphlets. If you ever find some of those, they have just little gems in them. They might like have 30 pages, but it'll be often by some of the the better astrologers from like the 30s 40s and 50s would do that and they were old people in like the 70s or early 80s and they would self-publish these little pamphlets and every once in a while i would run into those like back in the 90s or early 2000s and i need to hit more used bookstores again i need to do that i need to get out of my office <laughs> But yeah, well, guys, as always, it's brilliant speaking with you Um, just to tune everybody up. We've got Planet of the Month Club looking at the moon in May. The two hour workshop will be May 7th. And again, this is progressive evolutionary astrology. It's which is kind of going beyond the scope of traditional interpretation. Although I talk a little bit about that so that you can compare and contrast. Um, And of course we have the planet of the month club discord and all of that's found in the link in the description. Jennifer is, has designs on being a 
teacher of astrology. And so she's kind of doing the TA side of things. Having a blast. Right. Jennifer's (laughs) gathering all of the tests that people have taken to apply to be um, in the intermediate astrology class. And we're going through those. I mean, we're both going through them, but she had to hand grade some until I figured out how to make the test self-scoring. My bad, Mercury retrograde. Um, Got it figured out. Um, But we're still going to hand go through that because not every question is equal (laughs) on the exam. So Mm -hmm. there's going to be certain ones that if I see somebody missed it, I might have some follow-up questions just to make sure they're in the right placement because it's, the training's going to start to get a little more rigorous, a little more meaty. Not that the natal chart foundations won't be. That will give you a, a, a readiness for intermediate astrology. So, um, yeah. And you had office hours today for the last Venus. Yeah, we did. I heard good feedback on that. It was. It was wonderful. I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, each each person here has a different focus of kind of where they want to go or what they're deciding on. And and I'm a big believer in supporting people's goals and uplifting them and and help. I think everybody should do things that bring them joy and lift them up. I don't believe that work should ever be a dirty word. I think it should come from a space of our passions and talents and abilities and each one of you watching you grow and expand is beautiful so thank you for being here today thanks for having us yeah i love these chats yes always fun right (laughs) we'll do more of it let's talk about your intuition so we talked a little bit about this in astro chat where sometimes we'll tell a client wow you're hella intuitive and they're like i don't think i'm intuitive at all and that is because the way the media portrays intuition and being psychic it, it makes it something it's not okay now if you're a patron remember you have access to um the astro guides one of those is astro guide volume one issue two your guide to into instinct and intuition, understanding the difference between instinct and intuition. Now I know it's really popular for people to say, well, animals have instinct and humans don't, but we're animals folks like it or not. We're in the animal kingdom, not the mineral, not the plant, but the animal kingdom. We are primates. It's not a debatable subject. This is science. So we do have instincts. And that's where we use our primal brain, where we get that idea, oh, I'm in the bad, I'm in a bad place. I'm not in the right spot. Um, I don't feel safe. I feel uncomfortable. Though that's our instinct lining up. Our intuition does not have those feelings attached. It's it's a knowing. It's just knowing stuff or having an inkling or an impulse. Like maybe, you know, have you ever taken an exit you didn't mean to take, but it ended up being just the right thing? That could be our intuition. Um, It could be very, very subtle. And everybody has a different way of viewing it. You might sense things through your smell or maybe your clear audience. You maybe hear something. Could be a tone. It doesn't even have to be. It's not like you hear things like, Susan, you need to go to the grocery store. You know, that's probably not it. Um, You know, but it might be. I used to hear... um, it's funny when I lived overseas, I I would wake up because I would hear my mother saying, Lori, Lori, I would hear her knit her and then I'd be like, hmm, I wonder if everything's OK. And I'd give her a call and she might have just been missing me or something been going on or something like that. So um, 
it, intuition works in a lot of different ways. Sometimes people have prescient dreams. Sometimes people just have symbolic dreams. Um, sometimes people just know. Have you, have you ever had that one member in the family who knew the sex of every baby that was coming? You know, they'd be like, nope, nope, you're carrying low, it's a boy, you know. Um, or the person who could make the needle work at the baby shower. Yeah. Sometimes people are able to channel their intuition through reading cards or dowsing or um, even through astrology. You know, it's our lens, it's our focus, and then we hone our intuition. Maybe you know people who are mediums. Um, maybe you, but it, it's not all fancy. You know, everybody is intuitive and it can be so much a part of you that it, it's like your sense of smell. You don't notice your sense of smell until you get a stuffy nose, right? So same goes with our intuition. So what other questions do we have here? Let's see. Uh, this one comes from Gossamer Goings. What does it mean when Pluto is transiting in opposition to your natal sun? Is it a time to be concerned about your health? Depends on the placement of your sun in your in your natal chart. Um, it, <laughs> me too. Me too. I have Pluto transiting my sun, Mercury. Um, and in fact, as it slides back to Capricorn, it's going to do it all over again. Um, no, um, it, it, again, it really depends on what house placement it is. If, if you have a sixth house sun and Mercury, it, it might be a time to really pay attention to your stress levels, your daily habits, you know, your diet, your exercise. It doesn't mean necessarily that something bad is going to happen. Um, it could be a health crisis, it, it, but it could also be a time of, of that health crisis might pr provoke a spiritual event. Our souls don't indicate that we have to go through trials and tribulations to, to grow, but what they do is they use every experience to gain knowledge and, and wisdom. And, and so all of the things we go through in life, our, our soul's intent will use. Um, what I noticed with Pluto opposite my son and Mercury, cause they're in a Kazemi is I had to rethink things. I, I noticed a lot of the, um, uh, my, when my energy levels were low, um, and I had to respect that I couldn't push myself physically the way I had before. So the sun is your energy levels, right? Your constitution. Um, but also because my mercury is involved. Um, so if Pluto's opposite your mercury as well, or will be, or has been, it might be a time where you have to slow it down, reconsider things, trans kind of transform how you think, you know? So, but no, you don't have to immediately be concerned but if you got habits that need changing, then it's probably the time to do that. So there's that. Good question. Let's see who's next on here. Got new questions, new questions, new questions for Lori. Remember, if you're a patron, you can give me questions. Um, let's see. This is from Bridget. It's funny, but not surprising that my sister and fian fiance are Aquarius Sun Sagittarius moons. I would love a better understanding of Sagittarius moons in general. <laughs> thank you, Lori. Uh, thank you, Bridget. Um, well, again, house placement plays a role. It's not just the sign the moon is in. Funny enough, May, we're looking at the moon in Planet of the Month Club. But the moon is kind of how you react or respond, given emotional stimulation. Um, it's how we kind of sense the world around us. We're a lot more sensing creatures than we give ourselves credit for. And so Sag moons can be really interesting. They can be like really serious and really sharp. Um, or they can be goofballs, you know, it, it depends. I haven't met too many people who are, well, they're kind of both, but sometimes they lean in one direction or another. And again, it really depends, you know, a 12th house moon or an 8th house moon, a 4th house moon, you know, they're going to be a little more reticent. A 1st house moon, um, a 5th house moon, a ninth house moon is going to be loud and opinionated in some ways or choke back their opinions anyway um and there's nothing wrong with being opinionated i have a ninth house mercury and sun notice i am not shy on my opinions um 
you know, they might be a little more adventurous. They get bored easy. So it's kind of cool that they're both Aquarius Sag combo because um, they kind of run at the same speed. Um, they might be kind of jokey, but they may not take a joke well. <laughs> you might have to frame the joke. Um, if, if there are a third, seventh, 11th house placements, then they kind of they're more communicative maybe they're more serious maybe they're more academic um <clears throat> idealistic creative too maybe really creative and then if they're uh fourth sixth or, or sorry third seven. yeah fourth s no what i do oh second sixth and tenth went out of order that's what got me it's like wait i'm wrong mercury freaking retrograde i cannot wait till may 14th Ugh. so anyway second house sixth house or the um tenth house uh, they might be a little more focused on um kind of a kind of like career adventures gathering experiences finding new ways to make better mouse traps uh they might be entrepreneurial or visionary and they probably don't do well working for other people so that's kind of it um i think it's kind of cool that their sun and their moons are in the same sign they may not be utterly conjunct we i don't know what their their placements are and i'm not going to do a sinistry reading here but i do like that they're they, they in general you know will have a lot in common now it also means they're going to go through the same kinds of transits and so they'll be under stress at the same time as well if their if their placements are close to each other so yeah oh that was a that was a good one that was a good one i love these questions guys keep them up let's see what's the next question from anna <clears throat> let's see uh let's see sorry if this is too complex you mentioned degree theory or your disapproval of it last week on the podcast and mentioned that degrees actually show how mature or immature the energy is expressed what does it mean if a rising sign is zero degrees in a chart versus if it was 29 degrees in a chart for example well i'm not going to talk about the placement itself that you put in parentheses so again I want you to think of a zero degree planet as being something like uh, that strawberry from the Big Bang. Okay, it has all the potential. It can go in any direction when we look at the qualities of that sign. When we look at the 29th degree, this is somebody who has kind of mastered that energy, so to speak. They come in with a mastery of the energy. It is not exhausted. I don't, I don't know where that came from. We're not exhausted. So it's somebody who expresses um, not necessarily the higher levels of the energy, but they're, it, you could say less chaotic, you know, less unpredictable. Um, now both could have a laser focus, but that zero degrees can, again, it's pinging in different directions. It's very powerful. It's very creative versus the 29th degree, which is consolidated. It's, it's consolidated energy. It, it's, 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 it's formed. It's not forming where the other one is brewing and cooking and fermenting and, and fomenting. Okay. And it's funny, I, I have planets, you could say, in in kind of both spaces in my chart. So, um, <laughs> and so some is just very solid, very solid. And the, the, the one <laughs> that are at zero degrees, they're already radical in nature. <laughs> and so they're, they can be a little spicy and radical. Um, so yeah. So for an ascendant, it would be, uh, I would, I would say the zero degrees ascendant might be, um, it did just have very strong characteristics of the sign, almost caricature-ish, like, cause they're learning how, so it's like, 
they'll have some very strong features of that sign whereas the 29 degree might be a little like a little more refined in that respect like they don't have to show the sign off as much and they might you know have like the some of the classic features but not not in a caricature kind of way does that make sense i hope that makes sense so yeah good question good question i'll be teaching intro to the natal chart um again it is natal chart foundations it's a 12-week course i do have the exam up in the patreon i'm going to put it out to the mailing list you can check your astrological knowledge yes these are beginning astrology questions but some of them way more than others and let me know your readiness to move to intermediate level studies this is going to be a high high participation class so if you just want to sit there and listen well eh, may not be for you um the in the natal chart foundations class is beginning astrology you can just be starting your journey or you could have read about it for a while you're going to start uh putting things together and learning about progressive interpretation where we look at consciousness in a spectrum um we're not going super deep it's a 12-week class but you're going to be able to really take a look at your natal chart and not be as confused by the end of it you'll be you'll be more than solid for taking the next step and moving in to uh intermediate level understandings which would be retrogrades interceptions aspects understanding um how to synthesize so that's what you're learning synthesizing the chart versus understanding the separate parts well that's it folks that's all she wrote that's that's where we're at be safe this week <laughs> take care um mind the gap if you ever lived in london you know what i meant but just uh be well and uh, i'll talk to you next week on the awake space astrology podcast <laughs>